Let's talk about the new CFP contingency plans for COVID-19. They came out on Wednesday and said, okay, we know that there's a lot going on here. JT Daniels tested positive for Georgia, and Bill O'Brien and Doug Marone tested positive for Alabama. You know, there's some things going on inside these playoff teams that could obviously become a problem. And they decided that there will be no makeup date for the CFP semifinals. So the Cotton Bowl and the Orange Bowl will be played on December 31st. And if a team cannot field enough players to play in the game, then they will have to forfeit. And the team that did have enough players gets to move on to the national championship game. Now, the other side of this is the CFP national championship game. It cannot be pushed past January 14th for some reason which who knows what the reason for that is. Like, it's not, this whole thing was insane. When I talked about this on the show on Wednesday, I said, I think it would almost make sense for the CFP guys to move the games back a little bit because they see the ratings. They know that December 31st games do not rate as well in the playoff as games on New Year's Day or even later in the calendar. So it would almost be, Totally fine, I thought, to move the playoff games back a little bit if we do run into any kind of an issue. However, they have come up with all these kind of plans, like the they're making all of the bowl activities uh, voluntary as opposed to mandatory now. They are doing all of the media stuff online only, so <laughs> remotely. They, they're coming up with all sorts of different ways to keep the guys from any potential threats. But... There is a possibility that we will not have a national champion this year because if all four of these teams uh, catch the Rona and cannot play, then they're just not going to name a champ. So we'll just have to base it off of, I guess, AP voting and coaches poll, which is absolutely absurd. Like, Give me your thoughts on this because I swear to God, I, I don't know how this sport continues to get in their own way with stuff like this. All right. I, I have no thoughts on this because this is not happening. Like, I think this the, is, uh, the odds this are is very the small. scenario that they put into place. But once again, the majority of these teams are vaccinated. Like Michigan just went and all got the booster. Because of that, they don't have to test. So they literally would have to have kids spiking fevers for them to not play, which means if else the other three don't play, Michigan's just named the national champion. All right? Like yeah. that, but that's not going to happen. Because these teams have enough kids vaccinated, which means they don't have to test them. The college football just spent a lot of time and energy coming up with something that makes them look incompetent that they didn't have to do. <laughs> they didn't when have to release says, anything. What is your what is your what is your counter for if this happens? My response would be if I was in that chair, you'll find out what that is if that happens. We don't foresee that being a problem. Yes, you did not have to say anything. And and by saying because, something... Because if we're going to do the what, what if hypothetical, well, what if everybody just comes down with ass cancer? Like, <laughs> I, I don't know what we're doing. Like, it's just, it's not going to happen. But listen, we, we've got two years worth of data that virtually zero 18 to 24-year-olds are going to be, especially those who are in incredible shape and who see team doctors like twice a week. They know what they're putting in their bodies. They know everything about these kids. I'm certain these guys are going to be fine. And all the doctors, the medical professionals, they're certain they're going to be fine too. Yeah, yeah, I think you're probably right. There will not be a lot of testing going on. I will tell you that. And if there is anything that's going on, they'll they will more than likely find a way to hide it. And, and they will just if go and play. If Daniels got tested because he's either unvaccinated or because he spiked a fever or something of that nature, I assure you that JT Daniels, like like he's out for ten days. I'm I'm sur- I'm a thousand percent certain his symptoms, whatever they are, they clear up and he is free to play one day at minimum one day before the game starts. He had those symptoms three four days ago. Yeah, so, I, I I'm certain because all college sports do is fudge numbers. That's all we do. So yeah. they're going to get this in. They're absolutely. They went through all of this rigmarole. They put all this time and energy, and then the plan they came up with makes them look dumber than we already thought they were. And there are people like I who thought 
they, I just didn't know they could get any dumber. Okay. My, I think so little of these people that do this, but, but the issue is, is they didn't have to, they literally could have just said, we're, we're, we're positive. This will not be a problem. Yes. And yes. if it is, then you can come at me for not being prepared. If it is, but you can't yell at me for not being prepared for something that we're almost positive. It, it's not going to be an issue. No, I, I tend to agree with you. I tend to do agree. Do we think Delta, do we think the Delta virus that we know everybody could have gotten, but not get sick if you got vaccinated? Do we think the Delta virus didn't go through any of these teams throughout the season? How did, how did, how did none of these teams have to cancel anything? Because if you're vaccinated, you don't have to be tested. That's yeah. why. So why would you get tested right now? Why would you start testing all these kids if you want to play the game? That's, that's interesting. That's uh, yeah okay I can I can get down with that I, I see I see where so you're I have, going so I have no thoughts other than people who are dumb continue to make themselves look dumber even when they don't have to. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at GaryWCE at Chris B G and any at Winning Cures, or you can email us Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.